Hello, bonjour, and welcome to your new Bonner Private Wines video, and welcome to my new video studio. Today I want to tell you about a concept you may have heard about when you visited your local wine shop or seen written on wine labels without understanding what it means. The concept of wild fermentation, also known as native yeasts, or wild yeasts or even wild ferment. Spoiler, it's not about a fermentation gone wild. Winemakers wouldn't tell you about that had it been the case. So what is it? Well, let's explain. You already know how wine is made, obviously, especially if you watch my videos here regularly, at least you know that wine is fermented grape juice, of course, and you know that what transforms the sugar from grape juice into alcohol to turn it into vino are microorganisms called yeasts. That's easy. You may also have heard that for winemaking we use the same type of yeasts as for brewing beer or making bread, a species called Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and that's a type of yeast that is just extremely good at converting sugar into alcohol, very specialized at doing this specific task and not generate many other molecules. They don't produce much bad smelling stuff in particular, while other yeasts and fungi would turn a grape juice into something funky and weird and bad, potentially. But while Saccharomyces cerevisiae is one species of yeast, there are an infinite number of different strains that can be quite different from one another, just like we all humans, but we come in different sizes, different colors, different hair types, different eyes, different metabolisms, different smells too. It's somewhat the same for yeasts. Same species can have different expressions. Now, in modern winemaking, wineries generally use what we call selected yeasts. These are strains of yeast that have been selected. They have been isolated in a laboratory and identified as particularly good for making wine. You'll have strains that are better for baking bread, others better for brewing beer. You buy a pack of those yeasts and you put it in your grape juice in the winery and you're sure to have good yeast that will be happy living and fermenting your grape juice. And you're sure it'll turn into good wine if you use this strain of yeast. That's why we use those selected yeast generally. But what happens if a winemaker chooses not to add commercial yeast into their tank? Can they still make good wine? And the answer is yes. You see, in the vineyard, grape skins are naturally covered in microorganisms, including yeast. When you harvest those grapes and put them into a fermentation tank at the winery, you therefore already have some yeasts in your grape juice. Those naturally occurring yeasts are what we call native yeast. Native to the vineyard. They haven't been selected in a lab. It's what it means. They are wild yeast. If you don't add packs of commercial yeasts to your grape juice, it is those wild yeasts that are going to ferment and make your wine. The obvious disadvantage of doing that is that it's quite riskier. There's a significant risk that bad yeasts will develop in your grape juice, bad smelling yeasts, or even bad bacteria that can turn your grape juice into a disgusting, rotting, thing, juice, vinegary and whatnot. That's why we generally use selected yeast, so we know we add billions of good yeasts in the juice and we're sure that they'll take control over this liquid environment and they do f their fermentation job really well. If you leave it up to nature to do that job, there's a risk associated with it. Although generally, if your harvest is quite clean, if the grapes are not rotten, if they're not covered in mud or things of that nature, if you have healthy grapes, the good native yeasts that are on it can naturally start fermenting your grape juice naturally and turn it into good wine. The advantage of wild yeast is that, is that your fermentation is going to be a combination of many different strains of yeast. Rather than having one single strain, which are essentially one single type of yeast, that clones itself billions of times in your tank, which is what you get from commercial yeasts. You introduce that single clone of yeast 
and that's all you get. With native yeast, you have millions of different strains that are all a little different from one another, living together in the ferment. The result is that the final wine will have a more complex expression because each strain of yeast that, is, that was used for fermenting will provide slightly different flavors and aromas while commercial yeast have one single more linear expression. Wild fermentations also give a bit of a creamier texture to a wine because the fermentation takes longer. They result in wines with lower alcohol as well because while yeasts are less efficient at converting sugar into alcohol so they waste some of the sugar to create other molecules. They generate less alcohol but they create a greater variety of other aromas and create more oily glycerol too. By using native yeasts, by letting nature select which yeast will ferment, you take a bit of a risk with your wine. But when it works, well, you end up with a complexity, a variety of subtle flavors that is simply greater. Think of it as a sports team, perhaps. If all players were clones of one another, even if you take the best, the very best players, five LeBron James versus five Stephen Curry, Sure, they'll play great basketball, all of them, but it wouldn't be as exciting to watch. And as the world has been moving towards a more natural approach to viticulture and winemaking over the past two decades in particular, as more and more vine growers have turned to organic viticulture, spraying less pesticides on the vineyards, respecting the terroir more, plowing rather than spraying herbicides and so on, so have winemakers relied more and more on those native yeasts. There's more poetry really to letting nature make the wine more by herself. Many argue that you get a purer expression of the local terroir that way as well. It's not only the soil and the climate that matters to a vineyard anymore, but also the type and variety of yeasts that were living naturally on the grape skins that will determine how the wine will eventually taste. It's less about one single recipe that everyone uses to make wine anywhere and everywhere, add a little bit of that brand of yeast, ferment at that precise temperature, use this much oak, etc. With wild yeast, every tank is different. Every wine becomes a little more unique. Wines can be a little more complex, a little creamier as well, less alcoholic. Some would say more natural, simply that way. Because we've been spraying grapes with less chemicals as well, it is actually possible and plausible that more natural yeasts live there on the skin of the grapes in the wild. There's more of them because we spray them less, making it easier for them to ferment properly when we need them once in the tank, and we need less of those selected yeasts to be added into it. As a result, it's more of a natural balance in the vineyard that benefits us in the winery as well. It's a whole ecosystem, if you wish. In fact, we're just coming back to the old way of making wine that we're, we are rediscovering now, just letting nature speak for itself, the winemaker there, just to make sure things don't turn sour. And now you know why wild fermentation is a thing. It's more traditional an approach because it was done that way for millennia. And somewhat now only is it coming back as what appears to be a more modern concept because we had been using selected yeast for decades now and we had forgotten how it used to be made. It's an interesting circling back proving that good winemakers are always evolving, always listening to what nature is telling them to make ever better wine. On this final note I'll leave it here for today. Thanks for watching and I will see you soon in the wonderful world of Vino. Cheers!